Hello, my name is Anne Marie Stoddard and welcome to Chat with a Mystery Author. Uh, this is a part of the Writers Workout Conference this week and I'm thrilled to be here. So thank you, Teresa Green and the wonderful Writers Workout staff for inviting me to, to come over and chat about mysteries. It's obviously one of my favorite topics. Um, just a little bit about me. I have written seven full length novels. Uh, three short stories and one ghost written novel. Um, my two short stories are actually featured in uh, some anthologies that made the USA Today bestseller list a few years ago. Um, so I'm in the company of some very talented ladies in that book. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just really happy to be here and I'm going to answer a couple of questions that were sent over uh, by Teresa and the Writer's Workout crew. So let's dive in. Let's see, how do you come up with the crime for your novels? Well, I guess since in particular I write cozy mysteries, um, usually it's a murder, uh, as that's pretty much the typical formula. Um, there is an exception. I do have one short story uh, set in a music industry, uh, my Amelia Grace Castle Rock series, um, where there's a stolen guitar. Um, I feel like having something a little bit lower stakes in a short story makes more sense. But if you're writing a full length novel, you want to raise those stakes. I think you want a body when that's possible. Um, the interesting thing is usually not the fact that someone was killed, but how they were killed. Um, particularly with cozies, this is usually tied to the setting or the main character um, and their interests or the people in their circle. For example, my Amelia Grace series uh, takes place in a fictional concert venue in Atlanta. So you usually have um, a rock star who has been murdered or uh, in the first novel, the owner of the venue was actually killed. Um, in my Aloha Lagoon, Lagoon, excuse me, in my Aloha Lagoon Mysteries, um, a multi-author series from Jimma Halliday Publishing. Uh, my heroine, Kaylee Kalua, uh, works in a clothing boutique on a resort in a, a fictional area of Hawaii. Um, and so most of the crimes surrounding her are fashion related. Uh, the first novel, I believe, um, the first victim was strangled with a bikini string. Um, there's another where someone is is beaten and a designer handbag is left by their body. So there's usually um, a different manner of death, but something that will tie into the theme of your book. Um, you know, if it's a music theme or if it's art or if it's fashion, uh, you want something that ties in with what your main characters into with the the audience that you're that you're trying to engage uh, and their interests. Um, let's see. Next question: How do you know when to reveal evidence? I think there may be some differing opinions, but overall, I think that ties in with your pacing. Um, you want to set your scene, especially with a with a standalone or a first in a series book. Um, you want to set your scene. You want to introduce your main character. Um, you want to introduce some of the supporting characters, give a little bit of backstory without info dumping. Um, you don't want to spend several chapters laying the scene, getting to know someone. You want to move quickly enough that you don't lose a reader's interest. Uh, so I would say if you don't have a body by the end of chapter three, you may want to rethink your pacing. Um, with evidence, after you've revealed the crime, I would say trickle in in the next few ensuing chapters. Um, I know length of chapters, lengths of the book may vary um, by by writer and the story they want to tell. Um, but once you've once you've revealed that there's been a crime, once you've found that body, you need to start dropping in clues, pieces of evidence. Um, not necessarily the weapon, but maybe something that someone has overheard or some theory, some gossip, uh, some little piece of evidence, a receipt or um, a picture or something that that starts to draw the main character or whoever is investigating the crime closer little by little to figuring out who done it. Um, I would say if you could maybe put in at least one big clue or reveal a new sus sus suspect per chapter for the next two, three, maybe four chapters after you reveal your body, um, that should keep your readers 
going that should keep people um, interested and wanting to find out if one of those suspects uh, is is the right one, if they're if they've made the right guess, or if that piece of evidence was a red herring, or if it pans out, if it proves to be something that actually gets connected to uh, the real culprit. Um, moving on, let's see. There's so many good questions here. Oh, this one's about some of my books uh, in your Castle Rock series. Did you know that you would write a series before you started the first book? <sighs> I dreamed about writing a series before I started that first book. Um, I've wanted to be an author pretty much my entire life. Um, that doesn't always work out. As, as you may know, life happens. Um, but about 10, 15 years ago, I, I had been reading so many books and just decided I'd like to try and write one of my own. It's been a long time since I've attempted to write a full-length novel. Uh, so yeah, I dreamed about writing a series, uh, but the first obstacle is always getting that first manuscript done, getting that novel written, getting it polished, getting it in front of beta readers, um, making it as good as it can be. And from there, I'm, I'm very fortunate that it was well received and I was able to write another book in that series and two other short stories so far. Um, my writing style and my voice have changed a little bit since we first met Amelia Grace and the Castle Rock staff, but it's always fun to go back and visit. Um, I do hope to share some more of their world at some point, uh, particularly Bronwyn. I would love to write a spinoff with her because she's so spunky uh, and very resourceful. And I'd love to see where she goes as she grows older, since she's one of the younger characters in the books. So stay tuned. I will uh, I'll hopefully get back to that world soon. Let's see. What is the difference between a regular mystery and a cozy mystery? And is it easier to sell one or the other? Um, cozies tend to be lighter on the violence, um, less language. Usually there is an element of romance, um, maybe not too, you know, not too erotic. Um, there are lots of subgenres, but I picture cozies being light and fun, lighthearted. Um, there is obviously a body and there's nothing lighthearted about death, but, um, you know, you, you, they're not too gory. Um, they're usually funny. Um, you know, most of the titles I think you will notice, uh, have a pun in them. Um, whereas your other mysteries, your hard boiled, uh, your thrillers, your paranormal, um, those are usually darker and more serious. Um, pardon me, I need a little bit of coffee. I would say it's not necessarily easy to sell one over the other because everyone has different tastes. Um, you know, it really just depends on identifying your target audience, knowing what they want to read, knowing what you want to write. Because chances are, if you have a story to tell, someone out there is going to want to read it. Um, and that's really important. Don't forget that. Um, I would say... I don't really think either one is easy, easier to, uh, to sell over the other. I really think it's just, it comes down to target audience. Someone out there wants to read it. I'm, I myself read tons of cozy mysteries, but I also read lots of hard boiled. I, le I read lots of thrillers. Um, I like a little of everything. So I would say if you have an idea and you know, the genre that you want or the subgenre you want to write it in, um, just, just do it. And then from there, polish it. Uh, get it in front of people. It might, you may be surprised. Uh, you may think that it would appeal to one demographic and then give it to beta readers and find that someone uns unsuspecting, someone surprising may really like it. It may speak to someone you didn't even really realize you were writing to. So the most important thing is to just stick with it. Um, once you've got a full manuscript that you can get in front of someone and get that feedback, um, do it. I highly recommend it. Next, let's see. Do you know who did it before you write? <laughs> oh, um, not always. <laughs> Sometimes I do plot ahead of time, um, especially with the books that I have written uh, for Gemma Halliday. Um, I co-wrote one book with her and she gave me some notes and then I wrote the main outline. Um, and in another, I guess in my Aloha Lagoon series, it's actually a multi-author series. Um, so in my three books where my heroine is, is the main character, she's a supporting character in some of the others. Uh, it's a crossover. Um, but in those, I 
typically write a full outline um, and know where I want the book to go and then submit that to my publisher, get her feedback, make changes so that we both feel good about where the story's going. Uh, and then I write based off of that. It does not always stay with the original outline. Um, you know, these characters tend to have a mind of their own. Uh, so sometimes things do change a little bit. Um, so I don't always know who who did it before I write. Uh, I usually have a, an idea. Um, sometimes that killer changes over the course of writing or even in edits where I realize, you know, this person has a much better motive. Um, this person would be much more surprising. I didn't even see this coming. And yet they spoke to me and said, look, I did this. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's a mix of the two. Um, in particular, I think I changed the killer in two of my three Aloha Lagoon books uh, before they went off to the editor because I had characters that just said, look, I did it. <laughs> um, Let's see, what is the next question? Uh, this, one's, this one's related, actually. Do you have to outline the entire thing before writing or do you let some of it reveal yourself as, as you go? Um, yes, uh, as, as I just said from that last question, um, with certain series, I do a pretty intense detailed outline um, where I have you know at least a paragraph for each chapter uh, and I go in and um, Scrivener is a, is a good tool I've used to go in and, and organize chapters and outlines and then just flesh, flesh things out um, instead of just starting from scratch. But there are certain books where you just get an idea and you go, you go off on a tear uh, and they practically write themselves. Um, my, my third book in the Aloha Lagoon Mysteries, which I actually have sitting here, um, Tiaras of Terror, is my favorite. It is Halloween themed. Um, I was about six months pregnant when I wrote that one, and I, I give my son Harrison uh, some some props for, for being an inspiration because I wrote that book start to finish in three weeks. Um, I had a very loose outline because my editor had asked for one, but I just had an idea, and it just just came out of me as I typed, and, and that book practically wrote itself, and I was really happy with the way it turned out. Um, so it wasn't fully, you know, pantsing as they call it, um, where you're writing by the seat of your pants. It did have a loose outline, but it, it kind of took on a life of its own as I wrote. And, um, books like that are just a gift. <laughs> it, it's such a, such a fulfilling experience to, to write something like that. And I, I, I wish that all of my books were that easy. <laughs> Let's see. We have a few more questions. Hmm. Let's see. When is the right time for the big reveal? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, a lot of people say if you were to divide your book into like three acts, um, obviously the, as I said before, the number of chapters, um, the length of the book may vary. Just try to keep your pacing tight if you can. Um, I personally would aim to end the second act with the big reveal um, because the next part of the book is the resolution, uh, is your conflict between your main character or whoever's investigating the crime and that culprit. Once they have surprised, this is this is who is who has committed this crime. That's when you want to get their confession or find out the why. Um, you probably have some conflict built where the character who has found out who the culprit is uh, has to escape with their life. Um, so you want to keep that action going, but you need to get that reveal out there before you can get to that exciting climax, that scene where the, the character has to to get away and make sure that the, the culprit doesn't get away with what they've done. Um, and then from there, you need to resolve the, the story, um, you know, any relationships or B stories with side characters, tie up any loose ends, things like that. So I would say if you're about two thirds to three fourths of your way into your book and you have not figured out how to reveal who your killer is, go back and, and read through what you've done. Check with beta readers and just be mindful of your pacing. Just make, you know, if, if you're a reader of mysteries yourself, think would I have read this far without knowing who, who had done it? Would I want to keep going or would I be starting to get a little frustrated or, you know, like would my attention start to wander? You want to keep people wanting to know what happens next. Um, and that's why pacing is so important. 
Let's see. Can you end a mystery without the reveal? Ooh, why or why not? That's a good question. Um, I won't explicitly say you can't end a mystery without that big reveal, but in my opinion, it feels a little, unless it's done very well, so don't, <laughs> don't, don't come at me for this. Um, unless it's done really well, I feel like if you don't give the readers that reveal, they're going to feel a little cheated. They're not going to feel completely satisfied with the story. Yes, you may think, you know, this is a good way to get them to buy the next book, but there's got to be some give and take. You know, there's got to be something that they get from that first story that makes them want to read the next one. And usually a big reveal of the conflict that is escalated throughout the book is the reward for reading the book. Um, now, a caveat would be if you have a B story that is a a second conflict that the characters are facing um, that may not necessarily get resolved in the first, especially if this is going to be a series that you want to plan out over the course of several books. Um, I would say, you know, as long as you can, with, with murder mysteries in particular, as long as you can resolve that whodunit portion in that first book, um, introducing another conflict with a cliffhanger to entice readers to buy the second book, I think is a great idea. Um, you know, maybe it's a surprise proposal, um, so like another character has gone missing, just something that is high stakes enough that a reader wants to, you know, oh my gosh, like what happens next? Like they want to read that next book, they can't wait for it to come out. But you don't want it to be that main conflict that you have been building the entire first book, because then the reader says, well, I read this whole book and I don't, I don't know where I stand. Like, I, I, I don't know what the, the big reward was. Um, and then again, that's just my personal opinion, you know, and like I said, some people may find a way to do it really well. And if you do send me that book, cause I would love to read it. Um, I'm a huge fan of any mystery. So <laughs> I, uh, I think, I think it could be done well in some cases. Uh, but me personally, I don't think that I could end a book without revealing that main, that main thing. Let's see. Which authors do you recommend reading to learn more about different styles of mystery? Ugh, I'm such a big book nerd. I love mysteries more than anything. Far and away my favorite genre. I do love a little bit of horror. Um, been really into Grady Hendrix lately. He's not so much mystery. He's mostly horror elements, but they are highly entertaining. Um, I think it's important to read a little bit of every genre because a lot of books cross genres. Um, a lot of books have mystery elements, but also have horror elements um, or romance and mystery, paranormal and mystery. Um, there's so much overlap. There's literally so many, you know, micro niches that there's something out there for everyone's taste. Um, but for me right now, I got my start reading Victoria Laurie, um, her Psychic Eye Mysteries, her um, Ghost Hunter Mysteries, and Charlene Harris loved the Sookie Stackhouse Mysteries. Um, Loved the the Shakespeare mysteries with Lily, I think her name was. Gosh, it's been so long since I've read those. Um, really, anything that, that she wrote. She had a few standalones back in the day, too, that were really good. Um, so as far as cozies, Charlene Harris, Victoria Laurie, Gemma Halliday. Love a lot of her in high heels, her, you know, Hollywood homicide, Hollywood secrets, all of those. Um, the uh, Jamie Bond series she did with Jennifer Fischetto. I adore both of them. They are such a good writing team. Um, so those are some of my favorite cozies. Um, but right now I have been, I've been into more of the, like the thrillers. Uh, I really love Megan Miranda's books. Perfect. Great standalone books. Um, they're all set in like North Carolina, I think. So I think that's where she grew up. So, um, I love Asheville myself. I'm, I'm not from that area, but it's, it's kind of nice to read those like mountainous mysteries. Uh, they're all, they're all very different. They're all very, very vivid, very well-written, good twists. Um, I just finished reading Karen Slaughter's uh, Grant County series, fictional county in Georgia where I'm from. Um, loved, loved those. I actually read her Will Trent series right before that, which is a spinoff. Uh, so unfortunately it, it spoiled a little bit of, um, some things that happened in the Grant County series for me, um, but that's okay. You know, I, you, sometimes you sometimes you read things backwards, but I was just so thrilled with both series. They're gritty, uh, they're dark, they're very different from 
the cozy mysteries that are right. But you know, it's sometimes you write, you read something different as an escape from from what you're used to. So it's it's nice to read all these different subgenres of mysteries. I I especially love it when someone writes one so well that I can't figure out who did it until that big reveal on that like last you know page before everything changes. Um, I would highly recommend any of those authors to you. And there are so many more. I I could sit here and <laughs> I could sit here and list authors to you all day, but I know we don't have a lot of time for that. <laughs> so we're going to move on to our next, let's see. Oh, and this, this is actually a good, uh, it's related. Is it better for mysteries to be a series or single books? Um, it depends on if you have an idea that you feel like you can write in a complete capacity uh, as a standalone. If you feel your whole story is wrapped up with a bow tied on it in one book, that's great. Um, that's what Megan Miranda does. All of her, uh, like all the missing girls, uh, the last to vanish. Um, all of those are standalones. Um, they don't have any overlapping characters that I've noticed. They're all complete. They're all similar setting, but very different. Um, but then, you know, if you, if you're like me, you know, I prefer TV series to movies because, you know, it's nice to have something to binge. It's nice to come back and visit the same characters in a new, you know, up to new hijinks and a new situation. Um, so if you look at it from that perspective, you know, you just need for a series, uh, you need a hook that can tie each book together without feeling, you know, like it's too similar or too episodic. Um, like if your main character can remain the same. Um, and then maybe you introduce some new characters throughout the series. Um, I wouldn't use the same crime or if, if it's a murder, I wouldn't use the same manner of death or the same weapon in every single book in your series, or that's just going to get a little too redundant. Um, you got to get creative. <laughs> um, but I think that, you know, if you keep it, if you keep it interesting while still keeping some of those elements, um, the setting, the characters, uh, together, I think, you know, a good bingeable series has a lot of those elements. Um, it's actually, uh, in particular, my Aloha Lagoon books uh, I mentioned before are part of a multi-author series. Um, so it's very bingeable to me. I mean, maybe not, you know, I, I do read the other author's books. Um, but I, I like the concept of, of multi-author series because there's potential for crossovers where in certain, um, like in Game of Thrones, where you have storylines or, you know, any, any TV show where you have storylines that center around you know, one, two, three characters for one episode and maybe a B story with two others. But then the next episode is about other characters from that same realm. And they're not always in this in every single episode, but they do interact with each other. Um, that's what I really like about multi-author series is um, with my three Kaylee Kalua novels in the Aloha Lagoon series. Um, you'll see cameos from some of the other authors' characters. Uh, and then in their books, you'll see cameos from some of my characters. Uh, you'll see a lot of the same settings. Um, you'll see that we have a lot of the same supporting characters who are never actually uh, front and center in any of the books, but they're always there in the background, um, helping provide you know, gossip or you know, information, finding clues. Uh, and so it's really cool to follow, you know, on a journey with a different main character, every, every other book or, you know, every few books, but still see some of those old favorites. Um, you know, like I, it's, it's cool to see, you know, Kaylee pop up in, in a book about Sam. Um, it's, it's just really fun to see your characters playing in a world with other authors, characters, um, and something like that makes a series bingeable to me. So I definitely prefer, uh, to circle back, I prefer series over standalone. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean one is better than the other. It all, all comes down to your preference and what you want to write, the story that you have to tell. Uh, and from the reader's perspective, it's, it's their preferences. Do they have the time to invest in reading multiple books? Um, or do they just want a quick, complete story and then move on to something else. Um, so I think both are great. And last question, cause I know we're running out of time. Are you working on anything now? <laughs> well, I've been on a bit of a writing hiatus, um, just to focus on, on work and, and my two boys, you know, I'm a, I'm a wife, a mother, a dog mom, um, you know, an, a full-time employee. <laughs> uh, and you know, so life, life happens. You don't always have time to work on writing when I want. Uh, but I've been jotting down a few ideas. Um, I've got a few things I'd like to work on soon. So, you know, stay tuned. Um, 
And I think that is all of the questions we have. So we will wrap up. Uh, if you have questions for me, please feel free to email me at amstoddardbooks at gmail.com. Uh, visit my website, amstoddard.com, or excuse me, amstoddardbooks.com. Um, if you want to check out any of my books, I've got a few here. Um, the one I co-wrote with Jim Halliday, Hollywood Homicide. Um, also, Murder, Murder at Castle Rock, my, this was the, the ARC copy. <laughs> uh, it's the first in my Amelia Grace series. Um, and then I've got a few of the uh, Aloha Lagoons. I think the first was Bikinis and Bloodshed. And then Handbags and Homicide and my personal favorite, Tiaras and Terror. Uh, I have another series, um, Supernatural Elements, uh, about an artist um, with psychic abilities named Darcy Harbinger. Um, Death Perception is the name of the first book in that series. I'd hope to write some more about her soon because Darcy, I think, is my overall favorite character that I've ever written. She's near and dear to my heart. Um, so, yeah, if you want to check out any of my books, that's great. Um, I do want to congratulate. Um, I spent a lot of time working with literary, literary agents in um, my younger younger years and my early stage of writing my writing career. And a uh, mentor and agent that I had come to to consider a, a great mentor and friend Lucinda Halpern just published her book uh, in February called Get Signed so if you've got a story that you're ready to tell an audience and you want to find um, an agent look her up Lucinda Literary Lucinda Halpern she's fantastic tell her I sent you I cannot say enough good things about her um, if you want to pick up her book it's also available on Amazon now and I think other book retailers so you know check her out she's got so many experts with such great advice in that book. Um, it's it is an author's bible if you're if you're looking to get um, to get yourself you know published. If you're not going the self publishing route and you want to go the traditional route, I would definitely check her out. Um, but that is all the time I have today. So thank you again for coming to chat with a mystery author uh, at the Writers Workout Conference, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Happy writing. <laughs>